in the jungles of Wiltshire. Tropical jungle, southwest four. The farmhouse at Kew Gardens, where you cross the threshold into equatorial luxuriance. So heavy the humidity, so consistent the climate inside this web of steel and glass, you can almost hear the vegetation growing. Though they give pleasure to millions of visitors, the Royal Botanic Gardens are primarily a scientific institution. It's a world centre for plant research a source of actual plant material as well as information and advice. Dating back to 1759, the gardens have always had a royal association. Queen Victoria gave them to the nation in 1841. George III lived here in Kew Palace in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. Now the monarch of our time comes to Kew to open a formal garden specially designed as a setting for the 17th century palace. To be called the Queen's Garden, it's been conceived as a reproduction of a typical ornamental garden of the 1600s. To build a garden like this has cost no less than 30,000 pounds but more than half has been met by private donations. An Australian businessman has contributed the most generous amount, so it's largely thanks to him that we can enjoy this stroll into the past. But one of the most comprehensive gardens in the world is created anew every year to bloom for only four days. With three and a half acres of instant extravagance under one vast marquee, Chelsea is to flower shows what Ascot is to racing. By careful forcing or retarding, all the seasons are on show at the same time. This year, in spite of some of the worst spring weather for centuries, experience and artifice have triumphed once again. As in some horticultural crystal ball, tomorrow's summer blooms today, burgeoning towards autumn. Within this canvas cocoon at Chelsea, a gardening year and every gardener's ambitions achieve miraculous fulfilment.